Hey guys, I'm Andrew from MCAT Self Prep, and in this video, I'm going to show you a short snippet from my live car strategy session. You know, over the years, I've helped a lot of students with cars, and I've noticed that other companies tend to teach so many strategies that students get overwhelmed trying to use all of them while approaching their cars passages. And what I've found is that when you can have a single approach to cars and develop consistency from there, you're gonna be much more successful than trying to implement 20 different strategies at once when you're approaching these cars passages. So in my live car strategy session, my goal is to help you understand the one thing that's gonna help you get better at cars if you implement it consistently over time. I'm really confident that you're gonna get a lot out of this strategy session. If you enjoy the snippet that you see here today, go ahead and head over to mcatselfprep.com to watch the full 60 minute strategy session. And if you have any questions, be sure to reach out. I'm here to help. The passage starts by saying, literary historians tell two stories about the novel in America before the Civil War. Okay, even in just this first sentence, I am beginning to implement some of the comprehension strategies we've talked about. The main strategy I am implementing as I read this first sentence is using background knowledge. First of all, I am using my background knowledge to understand the unfamiliar term literary historians. How many of you have ever met someone who introduced themselves as a literary historian? As expected, I'm not seeing very many yeses in the chat. This is likely the first time you've ever encountered this term. So how are you going to understand it? Well, most of us would likely just keep reading, paying no attention to the fact that this term caused us some confusion. A good reader, on the other hand, will use their background knowledge while reading this new term. For instance, everyone here should have some previous experience with the term literary, right? It just means writing books. And everyone should have background knowledge on the term historian. It's just someone who studies history. Now, we just plug the two together and realize that the subject of this first sentence is someone who studies the history of book writing. Not too hard when you stop and use some background knowledge, right? The other part of this sentence that calls for the comprehension strategy of using background knowledge is the end phrase. America before the Civil War. This is where you need to think back to high school or maybe even middle school. What do you know about the Civil War? Well, I will be honest with you. I don't remember very much about it, except that it was a war between the North and the South that took place sometime in the early 1800s. But at the very least, this knowledge helps me realize that we are talking about books written hundreds of years ago here in America. At this point, I might even visualize a pioneer wearing a bonnet and reading a book. Now, I know what you are all thinking right now. Andrew, do you mean to tell me that you stop and think about all of this while you are reading? Ain't nobody got time for that. And you are right. No one has time to stop and seriously ponder about all of these things while reading a car's passage. But here's the amazing thing. All of this happens subconsciously. A good reader doesn't have to pause for 15 seconds to realize what a literary historian might be. Their brain automatically conjures up the background knowledge and pieces it together for them while they are reading. Additionally, a good reader doesn't need to pause to come up with a visual of a pioneer woman reading a book. It just happens. These things are automatically happening in the minds of good readers. And that's why they are good readers, because they automatically and subconsciously use comprehension strategies to understand and remember text that would otherwise be confusing. By the end of my Ultimate Car Strategy course, you will too. With that understanding, let's jump into the second sentence. First, wait, let's pause here. First, what do they mean by first? Well, when a good reader sees words such as first, then, after, or finally, their brain automatically knows that this is a good time to implement the strategy of linking. In order to properly understand the word first, we need to link it back to what we previously read. And when we look back at the first sentence, we notice that it says literary historians tell two stories about the novel in old time America. When the author says first, they must be introducing the first of these two stories. Great. Now, thanks to the, prop, the comprehensive strategy of linking, we understand the context, which puts us in the proper position to understand the rest of the sentence. Let's continue. First, the Puritan tradition, enhanced by Scottish common sense philosophy, created an atmosphere hostile to fiction. Once again, 
the comprehension strategy of using background knowledge helps me understand this sentence. I don't know everything about Puritans, but I do know that they were a very strict Christian group. And I know who Scottish people are, and that common sense is just simplified logical thinking. Using this very basic background knowledge, I am quickly able to realize that a strict person and a very logical thinker would not like fiction with its tales of knights, princesses, and dragons. I can see why this sentence makes sense. And as I am reading it, I might visualize a very strict Christian demanding that no one read fiction books. Now, if you have no idea who the Puritans or Scottish were, you might find the first part of the sentence very challenging to understand. And that's okay. There are times when even a very good reader, no matter which comprehension strategy they use, is unable to make sense of a certain word, phrase, or even sentence. In these instances, a good reader writes that part of this passage off as fluff and just moves on. We will talk about the skill of recognizing fluff and knowing when to move on in much greater detail in my Ultimate Car Strategy course. Let's continue. Second, and once again, we might use linking right here to remind ourselves that we are now going to mention the second story told by literary historians about the novel in Old Time America. So, second, the sparseness of American social life made conventional novels difficult, even impossible to write. The most challenging part about understanding the sentence is the first phrase, sparseness of American social life. What is that? And why might it make novels hard to write? This is where background knowledge comes in once again to save the day. You should have at least some background knowledge on the term sparseness, right? It just means that something is scanty or not plentiful. You should also have some background knowledge on having a social life, I hope. <laughs> it means you have friends and acquaintances. So putting the two pieces of background knowledge together suggests that Americans had few friends and acquaintances back in the day. And why might this be so? Well, this is where linking can help. Recall the first sentence of the passage told us that we are in the context of pre-Civil War America. What was life like back then? People lived far away from each other on farms, right? This may be why the passage is saying that they had a scanty social life. And putting all this together, we realize that living far apart is what makes writing novels difficult. Think about it. Does Farmer Brown have a printing press nearby? <laughs> of course not. He'd likely need to drive for hundreds of miles to find someone to print his new fantasy book. And by drive, I guess I mean ride his horse, right? This sparseness of civilization made writing novels difficult. And while reading this sentence, I might visualize a lonely farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, let's keep reading. The next sentence says, these two narrative strands led to a single conclusion. And when I read this sentence, I immediately implement the comprehension strategy of linking because this sentence refers to ideas that were previously discussed in the passage. What are the two narrative strands? Well, previously the passage mentioned the number two in reference to the number of stories told by literary historians regarding the novel in Old Time America. And what is the one conclusion that might be drawn based on these two stories that we read about? Well, both stories suggested that America was not a great place for novel writing back in the day. And before we continue, I just want us to pause and appreciate how well we now understand the first five lines of this passage. By now we have a very strong understanding of how everything mentioned so far fits together. But when you first read through this on your own, how many of you felt completely lost by this point in the passage? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of people say that they were pretty lost by this point, and that's totally normal. Most of the students I work with really struggle with this kind of passage and will end up completely lost before they even finish the first paragraph. Learning the research-based comprehension strategies that I teach makes all the difference. All right, next sentence. The would-be American novelist before the Civil War was drawn or forced toward a literary form better suited to American imaginative space. Wait, what? After reading even just the first part of this sentence, I feel like my head is going to explode. How many of you feel the same way? 
Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of yes in the chat. Look at this sentence. It is long, four lines long. And you will see this all the time on MCAT cars passages. When a struggling reader encounters such a long sentence, they will often end up totally lost by the end of it. In contrast, when a good reader encounters a long sentence such as this, they will notice that their comprehension is suffering and they will enact a comprehension strategy to counteract this. Typically with long sentences, I find the comprehension strategy of summarizing to be the most helpful. Now, you likely think of summarizing as the cheap trick that we discussed previously, where you write a short summary at the end of each paragraph. The reason this is a cheap trick is because it is implemented in the same way, regardless of the context. You write a summary at the end of every paragraph. The comprehension strategy of summarizing is very different. It is implemented by a good reader in various contexts that call for its utilization. One of these contexts being extremely long sentences such as this one. We will explore other contexts that call for summarizing in much greater detail in my Ultimate Car Strategy course, but for now, let's implement it on this long sentence to see how it helps here. After reading the phrase, the would-be American novelist before the Civil War, a good reader might automatically shorten this in their head to something like the old American novelist. Then after reading was drawn or forced toward a literary form better suited to American imaginative space, a good reader might subconsciously summarize this as was forced to write something better than novels. And now that we've summarized the first half of this sentence, the next half of this sentence should be much easier to understand. The romance created in an ambience of isolation, alienation, defiance, and apology that left its traces in the work. And a good reader would simply summarize this final phrase as the romance. Isn't this sentence so much easier to understand now? By implementing the right comprehension strategy at the right time, good readers are able to make sense of very confusing sentences such as this one. All right, let's move on to the next paragraph. This powerful critical myth, and I'm going to pause here because it is at this point right here that makes all the difference in understanding this passage. A struggling reader will likely just keep on reading, not really understanding what the powerful critical myth is, resulting in a failure to find the main idea and an inability to answer the majority of the associated questions. A good reader, on the other hand, immediately implements the comprehension strategy of linking. Why? Because the word this is a word that has to refer to something previously mentioned. Here's a simple example. The dog ate all my food. This made me angry. In this case, this refers to the dog eating my food. What does this refer to here in the passage? Well, it must refer to what was previously mentioned. Thus, we need to link the word this to what was described in paragraph one. And if I was to summarize paragraph one, I'd say it is the idea that novels were hard to write in old America. With this summary of paragraph one linked to the word this, the first phrase of this second paragraph can be understood to mean the idea that novels were hard to write in old America is false. And this is the main idea of the passage. Without the comprehension strategy of linking right here, many students fail to find this main idea. In fact, many students finish this entire passage believing that the author agrees with the information in the first paragraph, leading to great difficulty answering the questions. With the main idea in hand, however, we will have no trouble with the questions. Let's give this one a try. Now, I will walk you through the step-by-step -step approach to every CARS question in my Ultimate CARS Strategy course, but for now, let's just look for the answer choice that makes the most sense based on the main idea we've discovered. The question asks, if the information in the passage is accurate, which of the following would one least expect to find in a randomly selected American magazine published between 1840 and 1860? In essence, we are being asked to find the answer choice that goes against what was stated in the passage. So, which of the following are false? Answer choice A, an article lamenting the abundant reviews of novels by 19th century American novelists. Let's see. The main idea is that novel writing wasn't hard which would mean novels were popularly written in early America. 
Thus, there would be a, abundant reviews for those novels. Answer choice A agrees with this idea, making it incorrect. Remember, we are looking for the answer choice that is false according to the passage. Answer choice B, an editorial decrying Americans' hostility to their own indigenous fiction. The main idea of the passage is that novels were popular in early America. Thus, the idea that Americans were hostile to fiction is directly contradicted by the main idea of the passage, making answer choice B the correct answer here. Now, imagine that you failed to use the comprehension strategy of linking at the beginning of the second paragraph. You would be under the impression that the information in the first paragraph is the author's opinion, making you believe A is the correct answer, and that B is in line with past information and therefore incorrect. Not good. As you can see, mastering these strategies is crucial to finding the main idea and getting each question correct. Okay, during today's session, we've now done steps one and two. But what about steps three and four? Practicing and applying these strategies on tons and tons of passages is how these strategies will become second nature for you. Now, if you stay till the end of today's session, I will be emailing you the links to over 100 free cars passages as your free gift for attending, but my ultimate car strategy course will provide you with the links to over 1,000 free cars passages. Most importantly though, my course includes over 100 homework assignments that will provide you with detailed instructions for how to practice on each passage in a way that will allow you to enhance your application of the strategies. You see, simply reading passage after passage after passage is not going to do it for you. You need to practice in a way that makes you a better reader after every study session. You need to practice proven strategies in a proven manner. That's what my 100 plus homework assignments will do for you. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to head over to mcatselfprep.com to watch the full 60 minute strategy session. At the end of that session, you'll get the links to 100 plus cars passages and a special coupon towards my ultimate car strategy course. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel for some more MCAT study tips. And as always, feel free to comment below and me or one of my tutors will get back to you soon. We're here to help. See you next time, guys.